Arriving an hour or so before the sun drops, I set myself up for an evening flight of ducks. Okay, we're here tonight. Uh, it's a lovely little pond, this, in the middle of an hundred acre uh, wheat field. It's an old wet hole. Uh, they tried drain it, never did work, so the best thing to do was get some sport out of it. Uh, we're li half a mile away from the coast here, from the East Yorkshire coast. Uh, we've uh, got the Humber Estuary, some 14, 15 miles south of us. Uh, good draw for duck. I've shot every species uh, of duck on the game card that you can shoot uh, in England here. Uh, it's a very, very good pond uh, for widgeon and teal. Uh, and obviously we uh, get the ubiquitous mallard uh, quite often, but uh, it's one of the best widgeon ponds that I've ever shot. It's the first day of the season and we've been feeding it hard since the beginning of August. Uh, with uh, barley tailings, uh, wheat, uh, some apples and also some tarty peelings. So yeah, pretty much everything. Um, looking forward to tonight. There's been a lot of duck coming. We'll give it our best. To stay with the legislation, we're using steel shot here. Uh, Game Bar Super Steel Force, 32 grams. The trusty old Remy 1100. Shot a lot of pigeons and a lot of ducks this particular weapon. Okay, all on safe. The other key thing with duck flighting is uh, knowing when to stop. Uh, if you've got a good uh, draw of duck coming in, you've got to leave really and leave the, the tail end of the flight to come in undisturbed uh, and encourage more ducks to, to uh, come in also. Uh, so that's a key thing. Make sure you leave the tail of the flight to come in unmolested. And uh, we shoot pretty much once a fortnight, once every three weeks. Certainly not more than once a fortnight. And then you'll uh, draw the spot out for the whole season. For weeks, this isolated pond has been fed, pulling ducks from the coastal regions. All going to plan, we are set for a good night. Here's the man himself, the landowner and yeah. duck shooter extraordinaire, Mr. Shepherd, and young son Thomas. All we need now is the ducks. The first incomers arrive, but think better of facing a broadside. We don't have to wait long though, and soon a pair present themselves perfectly. Glad of having a three shot facility, I finally managed to fell one as it towers above. Third time lucky. Warm up over, it's time to concentrate. Every five minutes or so another flight comes in. It's a mixed bag of teal, widgeon, mallard and tufted ducks, all providing excellent sport. The shooting is pretty even between myself and Shep, with both of us dropping ducks in each wave after my initial rustiness. Got both of them. <laughs> As the light draws away, the shooting gets harder, but the duck come thick and fast. Okay, that's the end of a, a great flight. First flight of the season, stars are out, temperatures dropping rapidly, a uh, good selection of species. Uh, we've got uh, mallard, got teal, uh, widgeon, I see there's a couple of tufted duck, uh, one gadwall, and uh, a pintail actually came in first, but uh, we let it go around again and it decided it was uh, going to go elsewhere, so we missed out on the pintail, but wow, what a super flight to start the season. With the shooting over, it's time to pick up the spoils of the evening. 
Dogs are essential for duck flighting, but each shooter must be careful to mark where their birds have fallen. Working the ground carefully, the fell ducks are soon accounted for. We leave the remainder of the flight to carry on and encourage more sport for next time.